Welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Dolika Jyoti Sharma, an assistant professor in English at Gohati University. Uh, the module we are doing today is uh, My Days by RK Narayan, which is in the Indian Writing in English course. Rashipuram Krishnaswami Narayan Swami, commonly known as RK Narayan, is one of the most extensively read Indian writers in English. The subject matter of his writings includes the small incidents and happenings that he witnessed in real life, which is to say that everyday life becomes the subject matter for R.K. Narayan. He was a contemporary of novelists Mulkraj Anand and Raja Rao, uh, who were also known for their important fictional works. Apart from the, uh, the novels, Narayan wrote many short stories, articles, sketches, essays and travel books throughout his career as a writer. All of his novels, except a single novella, The Grandmother's Tale, published in 1993, are set in an imaginary town called Malgudi. Many of his short stories are written with Malgudi in their backdrop. Though the town existed only through his words, it created such an effect that the readers felt it to be real. Narayan's comment about this was that if it's a real town, it's a nuisance for a writer because he thought that people would tend to find inexactness in it. As it was an imaginary one, it could fit in everywhere. The 14 novels he wrote depict the simple life of the people of Malgudi, its politics and absurdity with all kinds of changes that actually take place in the town. Swami and Friends, published in 1935, The Financial Expert in 1952, The Guide in 1958, Waiting for the Mahatma, 1955, Mr. Sampath, The Printer of Malgudi, published in 1949, The Man-Eater of Malgudi, published in 1961, The Vendor of Sweets, 1967, and all the rest of the Malgudi novels explore different issues related to the Indian context and specifically to the South Indian urban and semi-urban life, where life is portrayed in terms of colonialism, socio-political and familial issues put forward in a very subtle way by Narayan. He, being a witness to, British, uh, to life under British rule in India, had come across all the changes in the educational system, administration, railways, and so on, which are all manifested in his novels. Narayan viewed both the new and the, and the old India, the transitional period, aptly embodied in his writings uh, quite often. His stories were serialized in television, which became very popular, and his novel, The Guide, which was published in 1958, was adapted as a film as well. The tradition of writing autobiographies and memoirs in English can be said to have begun with some of the notable figures such as Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Kashi Prasad Ghosh, uh, who inspired Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Lajpat Rai, and Jawaharlal Nehru to write theirs. But the autobiography of Latullah, a Mohammedan and his transactions with fellow preachers, published in 1857, is considered to be the first one written in English. The basic difference between a memoir and an autobiography is that the former is autobiographical in nature, which emphasizes on the author's self in the process of development, while the latter deals with the events, people and experiences that mold the personality of that person. To name a few more personalities who have remarkably contributed in shaping the modern Indian history and who wrote their life stories are Bipin Chandrapal, Shubhash Chandra Bose and S. Radhakrishnan. The literary figures such as Dom Mores, N. C. Chaudhary and Mulkraj Anand too have written their autobiographies. Uh, in Ranga Rao's words, the memoir of R.K. Narayan, My Days, is the story of Narayan's nurture. This memoir presents the archetypal story of a self-launched artist. We are privileged to witness here the making of an Indian novel in English. Unquote. 
My Days acquaints the readers with Narayan's boyhood, his journey as a writer and the trauma he underwent after he lost his wife early in life. It also reveals the circumstances revolving around the creation of his novels. Narayan begins his memoir by recalling his childhood. He spent most of his childhood under the care of his, of his maternal grandmother in Madras as he had many siblings and so his mother could not take care of all her children. His time was spent mostly with his pets, perhaps for the reason that he was a lonely child who occasionally had the company of his uncle. He remembers his uncle who was a college student then, preoccupied with photography and drama. As a student, Narayan did not show much proficiency at school, but at home he was compelled to do lessons on the ragas, Sanskrit shlokas, Tamil and multiplication by his grandmother. His exposure to the dual world of religion, Christianity at school and Hinduism as a Hindu, Brahmin at home and uh, left an, an indelible mark in his young mind. The city of Madras, the active life of his grandmother, his fears and everything else he came across are recorded in his memoirs. The Narayan was a quiet, dreamy and shy as a child. He had a very observant nature. All these experiences of his boyhood later inspired him to create the character of Swami for his first novel, Swami and Friends. His mischief as a child, freaking out with his gang of friends in the summer breaks during his school days in Madras, finds expression in his fiction. Another activity which had a great impact on Narayan's writing career is reading. He became an avid reader since a very young age. In fact, this characterizes most of all the greatest writers that we find. Almost all the greatest writers have always had interest in reading. They have a wide range of reading which has actually uh, enriched the, the novels or whatever they chose as their particular field of writing. So Narayan also had the privilege of accessing books from the library of the school where his father was a teacher. He was immensely influenced by the, inf uh, by the views of Rabindranath Tagore on education and Rabindranath Tagore's poetry. His reading included world's classics and fictions with tragic ending. It's important because many of his novels have this underlying note of sadness uh, which might be explained by his uh, interest in reading tragedy. In my days, Narayan tells us about all the ups and downs of his writing career. He was discouraged by many, calling it unwise to consider writing as a means of earning. We have also to remember that at that point of time, writing was not as much, uh, uh, as much regarded with respect as it is now. It was seen as a uh, not very important profession. It, in fact, it was not seen as a profession at all. Which is why Narayan taking up writing as a profession was in a way very new for his age. But Narayan was determined and his writing career began. Of course, it did not begin very smoothly. His father thought it to be a waste of time to spend on the huge typewriter which Narayan used for typing. Narayan then moved to Bangalore as his grandmother was there to uh, recuperate from her illness. There, he embarked on his journey as a writer and the raw material for his writing was the life itself. He wrote from his own life. He wrote from the lives he saw about other people around him. He drew his inspiration from the mund mundane and transformed it into something extraordinarily real in his readers' minds. The idea that he formed over the years in terms of people he observed, situations that came his way, were finally weaved, woven into the stories he wrote. Almost all of them set in Malguri. Narayan did not wish to provide any kind of moral lessons to, their read, uh, to his readers. He wanted to provide just an example of ethical life in these novels. He wrote quote mostly under the influence of events occurring around 
unquote him which means that he did not provide a rigid moral or ethical framework for his writings the readers were invited to participate in creating uh, uh, creating moral or ethical meanings from the novels writing for Na narayan was also a gradual process once when his father's best friend passed away he wrote a poetic prose piece on friendship then he composed divine music he sent the manuscripts to london and would wait for the postman to arrive but it was not as easy as it appeared to him initially publishing was a huge labor at the time narayan had to face several rejections from many publishers of london with which uh, he became habituated in a little while but he kept goat hoping for a warm letter or a check to fall out but a neatly printed rejection slip was pinned to the manuscript and goat he still did not give up and remained persistent at the time of publishing his first novel swami and friends he faced a similar experience it is difficult for a struggling writer to get his work published he had a similar experience as has been stated earlier at the time of publishing his first novel swami and friends his friend purna who went to oxford later produced the manuscript to graham green and graham green was a very famous novelist at that time since then onwards the literary friendship of narayan and green began and the latter became instrumental in the publication of a number of narayan's works a lot of many other facets of narayan's life are revealed through his memoir his looking for love for example friendship relations with his wife daughter and other members of the family his views on religion education and so on the fact that he hailed from a typical uncomplicated south indian joint family where everyone lives in the same house in sheer harmony acted as the foundation for narayan's writing everything seems to have been the raw materials for his writing narayan once remarked goat to be a good writer anywhere you must have roots both in religion and in family i have these things and goat even in his personal life it is due to the support of his family that he could raise his motherless daughter without any difficulty in every crisis the family was together and his marital life too never encountered any conflict his marriage to rajam seems to be a plot of a novel as he fell in love with her seeing her drawing water from a tap in the street he pursued his love and married rajam at the same time when marriages were mostly arranged and that too against the astrological prediction that he would become a young widower if he tied the nuptial knot with her regarding religion and education narayan opines that quote next to religion education was the most compulsive force in a family like ours and quote as an orthodox hindu narayan believed in hindu philosophy which calls for carrying on with the life role assigned to every human being in terms of education he was entirely against the examination system with its quote unwarranted seriousness and esoteric suggestions and quote even after many years his views on education still remain the same such as in quote school college lectures and examination when never things that narayan either enjoyed or excelled at unquote memory and trauma play integral parts in my days narayan's novel the english teacher published in 1945 is replete with the memories of his dead wife his wife rajam died of typhoid in 1939 he shared an incredibly wonderful relation with his wife and so he always remembered her fondly he loved his wife dearly and remained faithful to her even after her death when they got married rajam was very young but she could manage her household duties quite efficiently she got along well with all the members of narayan's family she also had been much practical in her approach towards life at that time narayan was scripting the dark room which was to be published in 1938 
with his heroine Savitri as the central character. It's interesting also to see that Savitri is one of the Sati figures in India. In India. And I suppose uh, Narayan also viewed his wife in terms of that uh, Savitri, in, in terms of that all devote, uh, devoted wife. Uh, now, after his wife de uh, wife's death, Narayan went into a severe bout of depression. He never remarried, though he had been advised by many to remarry. So badly was he affected by her death that it took him six years to return to writing. While he was going through that crucial period, on the suggestion of a friend, he took psychic help to, ho to cope with it and after a lot of practice, he could communicate with his dead wife. It actually helped him tremendously to get himself out of the traumatic experience and move on with his life. At this juncture, he was encouraged by Graham Greene and Dr. Paul Brunton, who told him, quote, you will write a book which is within you already now, and it is bound to come out sooner or later when you give yourself a chance to write, unquote. After a lot of practice, quote unquote, psychic experience became a regular part of his life. He could communicate with his dead wife with the help of this process. Narayan began to feel Rajan's presence all around him during these sessions. It actually helped him tremendously to get himself out of his traumatic experience and move on with his life. Since then, another aspect of his personality evolved which carried him forward then onwards. It thus resulted in his maturity as a writer. These entire experiences of Narayan's own life echo in the highly autobiographical novel, The English Teacher. Soon after, he started publishing his own journal, Indian Thought, but it did not last long as Narayan himself was never very satisfied with it. Another incident in Mysore provided him with the setting for, of his novel, The Guide. It was during a severe drought, a prayer for rain was organized by the municipal council at that point of time, which lasted for 11 days and it rained on the 12th day. It was as if the prayers were answered. At a later period, while he was traveling in America, this idea developed and took shape of the novel which now has become, which has become subsequently very popular. Narayan mentions in his memoir about the actor and producer Devanan, who played the real lead role in the novel, uh, in the film. On reading his memoir, it becomes comprehensible that Narayan was the product of the society he belonged to, as V.S. Naipaul opines that Narayan, quote, operates from deep within his society, unquote. It seems to be evident from the fact that Narayan chiefly wrote about the middle classes to which he himself belonged to. He portrayed it with, his, with all its flavor, happiness, sorrows, tears, and smiles, which is also reflected in his fictional world. He was criticized uh, for not having written about the poor classes of people, particularly the peasants. But then at the same time, uh, it can be justified by saying that uh, Narayan wrote about about what his experiences were, uh, so that it gives at times a greater authenticity to his writing. Narayan's voyage of life as a whole entailed various hardships. There were a lot of compromises that he had to make, uh, had to make in order to sustain his life and sustain the tempo of his life. It was the period when Narayan was struggling to take up a profession when his father was retired and quote, all sorts of readjustments unquote, had to be made. They could not afford a big house like the one they were living before due to the scarcity of funds, especially the scanty pension of his father. For Narayan, it was a shift from his comfort zone where he had dreamt and imagined uh, that would facilitate his writing. After his marriage, in order to have a steady income, 
He even had to work as a reporter in a newspaper called The Justice. This is because writing was not a viable profession at that point of time. It never guaranteed any economic security, which is why a backup option, a profession, was really needed. So Naran had to write for many other publications against his wish. He, all he wanted to do was to write himself. Uh, so he had to write for other publications, much against his wish and taste only to earn a little money. Financial constraints were always there and his father's demise aggravated the situation. Naran's family lived in a rented house as his father did not seem to have afforded a house of his own. They could not afford a house of their own, which is why they had to live in a rented house. It was difficult, it was increasingly becoming difficult to accommodate this family which was being extended with the passage of time and especially with the limited income of Narayan and his brothers it was hard to meet the soaring rents of big houses. Later on even when he had his own house he lived with his family in the rented house using the new one as his writing retreat. My Days elucidates the storyteller Narayan's life as a mixed bag seasoned with different flavors. Something which is strikingly noticeable all throughout his memoir is that he made the utmost use of everything that came his way. Success did not come easily to him as his early novels did not receive much commercial success. But he began to be noticed by contemporary writers like Somerset Maugham and E.M. Foster. A long-lasting friendship had already been established with Graham Greene and a spiritual relation was made with Paul Brunton. When mom visited Mysore in 1938, he wanted to meet Narayan. But ironically, no one in Mysore knew who the writer Narayan was and so the meeting did not take place. In his personal front also, the demise of his wife was a massive setback. However, after much effort, he was rejuvenated and it became a turning point for him. His erstwhile avoidance of the tough old classics and Tamil literature might have remained at the back of his mind and he got interested on those, however, in the later period. In the year 1968, he was fascinated by Tamban and wrote a prose narrative on the Ramayana and translated the Mahabharata. His works began to be published in America in the year 1953. In the concluding chapters of the memoir, Narayan talks about his non-literary interests, armchair agriculture, which he found to be extremely engrossing. Unfortunately, he realized that agriculture did not prove to be a very profitable venture for him. He wrote letters to the newspapers about quote, corruption and inefficiency unquote, of the administration and endeavored to save the trees of Mysore. So unlike uh, his uh, image in the fiction, uh, in his fiction where he comes across as this very, uh, as this writer who is so concerned, preoccupied with writing, in his memoirs we come across R.K. Narayan also engaging with some kind of activism too. R.K. Narayan was conferred many awards including the Sahitya Academy Award in 1961, the Padma Bhushan in 1964, and the Padma Vibhushan in 2000 and honorary degrees by various universities. In the year 1989, he was appointed as the member of the Rajya Sabha, the upper house of the Indian parliament. In the year 2001, he took his last breath, bidding adieu to all his reader fans and providing a strong base for the contemporary Indian writers writing in English. Uh, to sum up, R.K. Narayan's My Days provides, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, provides a slightly wider, uh, a slightly wider range on the writer R.K. Narayan. R.K. Narayan, who is known more for his fiction, is uh, comes across in My Days as someone who also is very politically conscious, although that political consciousness is not very overt in his fiction. Uh, at the same time, however, R.K. Narayan does not 
really provide a moral about his life in my days my days is a memoir that presents uh, narayan's own life as an example of a trajectory of the development of himself it is not prescriptive in the sense that he doesn't provide his own life as a model that others should follow from his memoirs however we come across certain uh, certain uh, facets of arkanaran's life which however has to do with the ethical life the ethical uh, world around around him for example he's growing up in a joint family for example the circumstances of his meeting his wife the very unconventional manner of his marriage and his lifelong devotion to his wife and hers to him so these uh, these aspects of my days thereby uh, present narayan as a person whom we can relate with uh more uh, rather than as merely a writer at the same time however since narayan is con- uh, is consciously presenting himself as the subject of his memoirs there is also the aspect that is frequently associated with the idea of writing lives or the idea of life writing it is also a very considered construction of narayan's self because after all it is uh it is a going back to his life and recreating his life as it were from the uh, from the very beginning uh my days therefore presents uh both an autobiographical picture it is an autobiography of sorts a memoir but at the same time it is uniquely indian in the value system or, or the system of values or the world view that underpins this text uh in my days again we find narayan emphasizing the uh, the the supreme importance of imagination and memory all right in his writings he uh he he talks about how his memories of his wife or or how his memories of his growing up uh contributes to uh say the malgudi that we come across in his novels or the character swami and friends for example swami and swami and friends he is a very mischievous character and this uh, th- this this uh this very personality of swami is something that uh, we re- uh, that we can actually relate to the mischief that uh, narayan himself did as a child although one is in the real life as it were and the other is fiction uh the characters themselves are uh, in narayan's novels are of course cannot be uh, taken as autobiographical in nature they are characters after all in fiction but at the same time his fiction is something that uh, that has deeply embedded uh all these experiences and opinions of arkanarayan my days therefore provides in a way a bridge between arkanarayan the writer and arkanarayan the uh person although the two are not one and the same but through a reading of my days we can in a way bring the writer and the person into a certain kind of dialogue with one another